Oh, God. There we go. Hello, everyone. I'm Em. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today, we have a package here from Netgear, and I've been waiting for this package to arrive for several months now. It's finally here after many, many delays. My new router is here. Now, this is Netgear's brand new XR700 router right here. Here it is. It's beautiful. It's uh, got a new design, very different design to the previous one. We've still got like four antennas here. They all look pretty sick. I like the design of this one a lot more than the previous one that they gave me, which was the XR500. Uh, awesome router, like really, really good. But the design, I'd say, was a bit maybe too aggressive and too gamery. This one's uh, a lot more chill, a lot more aesthetically pleasing, I'd say. And uh, I've just noticed it has like a hundred LEDs on the front there. As uh, this does have seven Ethernet ports, it has a million things. It has 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It is insane. So you have like, you know, your five gigahertz band, your 2.4, and now 60. It's crazy. Uh, so let's unbox this bad boy. That's what we're going to be doing today. I will be doing a full router review, uh, just like the one I did for the previous router there. That is currently, you know, connecting all my internet together and stuff. But uh, review coming soon for this guy. But, you know, I have to use it for, uh, you know, like at least a month or something until I can tell you guys my experience about it and stuff. But uh, judging from my experience with their previous one, and uh, that being really good, uh, I'm pretty sure this is gonna like blow me away with its features and stuff and it's just gonna be a really good upgrade. Now my internet speeds uh, are not the best. I live in the UK. The best I can get in my area is around 75 megabit download and around 19 megabit upload but my ping is really good. It's around like 8 or 9 milliseconds and when I play Battlefield 5 I get around 11 milliseconds ping on the servers, depending of course what server I'm in. But a lot of the time my ping is around 11, uh, so that's pretty good. Anyway, here's the router guys, here it is. Uh, let's go over the box and like all the features that it has, as this does have a lot of features. A lot of features are pretty similar uh, to the previous one, the XR500, but this one has some extra stuff as well. So, we got uh, AD. 7200 performance Wi-Fi, 7.2 gigabit Wi-Fi. What? <laughs> uh, pro gaming features, seven uh, one gig ports, uh, six of them being LAN, one of them being WAN. Then we also have a 10 gig port on this bad boy and it also comes with a Plex Media server. It's just so sick, dude. You know, this is part of their Nighthawk pro gaming range, Netgear, lovely, lovely stuff here. Uh, in terms of the actual features that you get in terms of like um, software, I suppose, you get that whole gaming dashboard, geo filter, quality of service, VPN server, as well as the uh, seven gigabit ethernet ports that I mentioned a second ago. Now, in terms of the actual hardware that's in this bad boy, we have 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's the 802.11 AD Wi-Fi. Pretty nice stuff. I'll talk about the pros and cons of 60 gigahertz in a moment, as uh, that is quite a jump up from 5 or 2.4. The pros to 60 gigahertz being, you know, significantly higher speeds than 5 gigahertz, as you know, it's just operating at like a much, much higher frequency. However, the range, um, it's not that good. Uh, I watched Lance's video when he covered Y gig, and I'm guessing that's pretty much 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi, I suppose. And um, the range on this router, on 60 gigahertz, I'm pretty sure it's only gonna be able to transmit 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi to a device that is like in sight. If you go behind like a wall or a door, you're not gonna get 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. The frequency is just not gonna be able to penetrate any objects at that frequency. So uh, it's very, very short range Wi-Fi. But of course, if you leave the 60 gigahertz range, it'll just drop you to either five or 2.4, depending on the range and you know, the circumstances you're currently in. So it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, I will do like some speed tests and stuff before and after. Uh, I doubt there will be any difference whatsoever, but uh, we'll see. Maybe there'll be like, you know, um, a, a very, very small increase in performance. There probably won't, as uh, that router is already a freaking beast, dude. Anyway, moving on, we have a powerful 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor in this router. So we can probably handle quite a lot of devices connected to it all at once without any problems. So don't worry about that. Then there's also a 10 gigabit uh, SFP plus port connect. And then as with most routers nowadays, you also get two USB 3.0 ports. So, you know, feel free to plug in like an external hard drive, a USB thumb drive, whatever you want into there. And then this also comes with their Plex media server. I've heard about Plex many times. Linus always talks about it. Uh, I've never used it myself, but maybe this will be a good time to probably set it up and check it out. So that's probably what I'll do uh, in the actual review of the router. We have a cloud drive, 
that's pretty sick. And then of course the Nighthawk app that you can download on your phone, which I've already downloaded as I have their other Nighthawk gaming router. Right, apart from that though, let's dig in. Is there anything else I need to cut? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I need to use a knife anymore. How the hell do you even open this guy? Do you open it through this side? The other side? Wait, what? Aha, uh -huh, you open it like this. Unboxing professional here. Oh my god. Um, this is a big router. Oh my god. <laughs> See, I thought my current router was big. Oh, this comes with all the antennas attached already. Damn, dude. Um, I'm kind of like speechless at the moment. How will this fit on that drawer? Uh, right, what else do we have here? Um, there's a little booklet, I assume. Quick start. Oh. I'll rip that by accident. You're right, we've got a quick start guide. Uh, might need that, but probably not. Uh, Netgear connected home, update the firmware, that, that's a good idea. Uh, apart from that, not much else. Let's see what else we got in this package here. Ooh, 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 I'm... Oh, what the hell? What am I doing? What is happening? Okay, I think that's the power supply in there. Right, so we have a, a giant power brick. And, ooh, please tell me, yes, we got EU and a UK adapter. Ooh, and then you also get uh, a Cat5e Ethernet cable here, like a nice flat cable. Pretty sure it's like probably 1.5 meters long, if I'd have to guess. But that is nice of them to include an Ethernet cable there, and a rather nice one as well. Now, uh, let's attach the UK adapter here so I can actually power this. Very nice. This power brick, look at the size of this thing. It's massive. I think this is the biggest power brick I own, and it's for the router. <laughs> it's for a router. It's so massive. Oh, uh, just ignore all the uh, RTX cards back there. Uh, you'll find out what those are for soon. Right, can I just like take this guy out? Like, I don't want to damage the end. Oh, right. All right, now for the peel. Oh. Is there another one? Oh, you can see like through the chassis of the router is there's like a grill here pretty much to cool the whole thing as uh, like the size of this router is just it's um, it's unbelievable. It's so big and uh, there's a grill here. There's like a Nighthawk logo there and uh, you can see a fan there as well that I'm guessing is going to probably turn on. I hope this isn't loud. Uh, <laughs> it'll be funny if the fan just like ramps up to max speed immediately. But uh, given the fact that we probably won't be putting that much stress on the router, there's only like me and my mom that live in here. So I doubt we'll be able to put the router to its absolute limit, you know, with two people. So uh, I hope that fan doesn't like, you know, ramp up to freaking full speed or something crazy. But uh, pretty cool that you can see like, you know, all the electronics inside and stuff. Uh, pretty cool design, I like it. Now all of these antennas, uh, oh, you can just remove these two. Very nice, very nice. Boom. Now, these two are kind of like sellotaped together. Help! Oh, there we go. That can go up. We'll remove that. You can go up as well. Remove that. I'm just in shock at the size of this thing. These antennas are freaking beefy as hell. Like, look at the size of these things. Oh, there's also some more things to peel off. One in the corner there. Very nice. Got another one here. There we go. I think that's all the peeling done. I don't think there's anything else. There are some like giant rubber pads on either side here. Uh, so this router, it ain't moving nowhere. <laughs> like it ain't going nowhere. Really like the design of this one. It looks sick. The whole exposed area here. You got Nighthawk Pro Gaming logo. You have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you have 14 LEDs uh, just on the front here. Taking a look at the back of this router, we have, you know, the power port there, power switch. We got, the heck is that? Is that a hook? Oh no, that's the, <laughs> like, is that a hook? Jesus Christ then. Uh, no, you pull that out, that's the 10 gig port. Oh dear Lord, it is literally a 10 gig port. Oh my God, these guys are crazy. We'll see if I can try to, you know, pull something off here and try to use the 10 gig switch going directly to my PC, but I have a feeling that's not gonna be possible. Uh, anyway, we have, uh, you know, the WAN port there. We have one to six ethernet cables or gigabit, and then one and two can be used as an aggregate. So what you can do, and what I will do, is I'll put two ethernet cables running from the router to my Synology NAS, and uh, this will pretty much combine the two connections going to the NAS, so I'll be able to get two gigabit uh, transfer speeds between uh, the NAS and the router, which is very nice, but then the only issue there being I need, uh, you know, two gigabit 
connection to my PC as well which um, I think I can maybe achieve, but I think that's gonna take some work. But then apart from that, there's like a little reset button there and then there's like an LED toggle. So if you are getting frustrated by the LEDs on this thing, as there's what, like, you know, 14 of them or, or something like that, uh, feel free to turn the LEDs off as if this thing is in the same room uh, as your bedroom, which in my case it will be, I will most definitely have those LEDs turned off at night, else my whole room is just gonna be flashing away Thanks to, you know, the router's LEDs just going crazy all night. So going to probably turn those off. Right, so just before we replace my old router with this brand new one, I'm going to run a quick uh, internet, spest, uh, internet, spest, internet test here on a speedtest.net. Yeah, dude, go. And, and I'm going to run it again on like, the same location. Uh, so 11 milliseconds ping and uh, the download speed. I'm expecting around 74, 75 on a good day. Uh, yeah, 74.3 megabit uh, download and the upload. It's kind of all over the place. A lot of the times between like 18 and 19, I'd say that's the average. Uh, but at the moment we got 17.2. Right, um, doubt that's going to improve, but uh, you never know, dude, you never know. So uh, with all that said, let's unplug the old one, which is sitting right there, and uh, replace it with this brand new one. I don't even know if this router is going to fit. Like, it's so freaking big. Uh, right, let's... Say goodbye to this one. Goodbye, friend. Right, so uh, here it is. It's, uh, it's just barely managed to fit on here. Uh, I don't think I can add any more devices here at all whatsoever. That's just not possible anymore. But uh, I need to give it power first of all. Right, so let's plug the power in. Wait. Okay, I think it's on. The LED is not turning on yet. Oh, have I turned the LEDs off? Are you alive? <laughs> okay, now I'm just concerned. <laughs> Oh, it, I've not turned the whole power on, there we go. Silly me, there we go, it's on, it's working. For a second I thought it arrived freaking broken or something, but no, that is not the case. Now let's plug in all the necessary ethernet cables that we need. Bam, bam, bam. Right, so that's Philips Hue. This is my security cameras. There's one more. Right, this is either my PC or the server. Oh, I don't bloody know. Um, right, I think we're okay. I think we're, we're good to go. Uh, the antennas, by the way, have LEDs. I've just noticed this. I have like LED lights uh, at the back right here. All of them. And they're red. Pretty cool. <laughs> now, one thing I'm not too happy about now is, um, you know, the lack of space here. And like, I can't really put my, my Arlo security system alarm thing anywhere. Now, do we have internet? Uh, this says no internet. Bloody hell. That's not good. Troubleshoot. What is happening? Uh, internet cannot be reached. Not a problem. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is type in router login. There we go, important update. Awesome. Uh, we're gonna update the firmware now. This is the, I guess, installation screen that you're gonna go with. So WAM port preference. Uh, oh, I see, right. Yeah, I've got the one gig port at the moment for WAM. Make sure your router is connected to the internet. Uh, yes, it is. Checking for internet connection. You better find one, because uh, all the lights are flashing okay. Internet detected! Right, so I'm guessing it's currently just running like an internet speed test for us. Well, uh, while this is still checking my internet speed, which for some reason it's taking forever, uh, the router did come with a QR code that you can scan and immediately connect to the Wi-Fi, which I'm going to try to do now. So I'm just going to open up the camera app on my phone, press on that, and uh, there we go, I'm drawing the Wi-Fi. Simple as that. Really cool that the Netgear routers do come with this now. Uh, and if, of course, you for some reason can't scan a QR code to connect to the Wi-Fi, you also have the uh, network name as well as the network uh, password there as well. So you can connect to the Wi-Fi. Easy peasy, dude, no problem. Uh, but uh, we are on the Wi-Fi right now. It's all good. It's uh, called Netgear 36. Pretty cool stuff. There we go. Uh, upload, a thousand megabit. What? <laughs> uh, so it's determined our download speed is 74.40, which is, I'd say, about right. I really don't know why I put a thousand upload speed. That seems um, a slightly off, <laughs> to say the least. And then over here you can set up your, your username uh, and password for your admin account settings, I suppose. Now over here you also do get the ability to set up different Wi-Fi names as well as passwords. If you want to change them, uh, feel free to do so, but that's not necessary in this case. Uh, oh dear Lord, because we've changed the Wi-Fi name. Oh no, all of my smart plugs. Everything is gonna have to be updated. Ah, my Amazon Echoes, they're no longer working. 
damn it, my Amazon Echoes no longer work, my smart plugs no longer work, my lights no longer work, it's, it's the end. There we go, new firmware are available, you're gonna press update. There we go, update successful. So admin and then your password. And here we are. All right, so here is the dashboard. We have, you know, all of our Wi-Fi statuses here, 2.4, 5, and 60 gigahertz. We have our CPU usage, all the installed apps. But so we also have the network overview over here as well. So we have your download and upload speed across, you know, your entire network here. Pretty cool stuff. Then we also have the geo filter service here. So I'm gonna select my location as being the UK. And then based on the radius I set here, and this is in miles, I guess, so 1,200 mile radius here uh, around the UK, um, I will not be connected to any servers, I guess, to games outside of this radius, which is pretty nice. So you can kind of ensure you get the best ping possible when matchmaking, uh, which is pretty cool. Then we have quality of service, a buffer bloat. I've covered all of this stuff before in the review, uh, but you can pretty much prioritize traffic as well as prevent like uh, random ping spikes in games thanks to the anti-buffer bloat. So if you want to set that up, it's actually a really good feature. So if for some reason someone turns on freaking Netflix or like a YouTube video or starts downloading something, uh, you will hopefully not be affected at all thanks to this uh, feature here. And uh, you know, no matter what's going on on the network, if someone's freaking hogging up all the bandwidth, you can still be safe in game, I guess, and your ping won't go crazy or anything. So pretty cool feature here. And then over here, you can also allocate bandwidth for you know download as well as upload speeds uh, for you know all your various devices that are connected to your router right there. Then below here, we have traffic prioritization. What? Uh, we have traffic prioritization. You can add a device here. Uh, let's say my PC, the tech block PC. Then you can select the game. So let's say Battlefield, as I haven't played a lot of Battlefield. Battle, God, I can't speak today. I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 5 lately. Uh, let's press done and traffic for Battlefield 5 will now be prioritized. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we have device manager, one of my favorite features here. You can see all of the devices here, whether it being you know, WAN, LAN or Wi-Fi. Pretty dope stuff. Uh, currently the iPhone 5 right here is iPhone 5. The iPhone 10 is connected to the 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi band, as you can see, it says 5 gigahertz, Netgear 36, and then via LAN, aka Ethernet, we have Philips Hue, my security system, my PC, as well as the tech block NAS. And then via WAN, which is, you know, my connection from my modem to my router, via Ethernet once again, uh, modem, WAN, router, boom, pretty cool stuff. We have network monitor, pretty much the exact same thing on the dashboard there, but I think you can see per device exactly what's going on, yeah, so total usage, Apparently my security system is using the most bandwidth at the moment out of everything. So you can see that. Pretty cool stuff though, right? Like you can monitor exactly who is using up all the bandwidth. So if your brother or something is, you know, hogging all the internet and is claiming not to be, then we have hybrid VPN. We didn't have this in the previous router. What is this? VPN uh, setup. I do have a VPN. I use Nord. Uh, we have VPN traffic. What? I'm gonna have to learn more about this myself before I can talk about it to you guys, I guess. Then we also have system information, we have uptime, uh, the firmware version, you know, stuff like that really. Uh, nothing too exciting here, I suppose. We have the RAM usage, as well as CPU usage there as well. All four cores of the CPU. I think this router has like half a gig of RAM as well. Pretty dope stuff. Right, so under USB storage, I've used this in the past. I used their whole ReadyShare service, which worked really well. Uh, I pretty much just plugged in an external hard drive into my router and uh, that was it pretty much. It was detected in Windows and everything thanks to their whole ReadyShare service. Worked flawlessly, it was a really good experience and uh, they've still kept all that feature here. So we've got uh, Ready Cloud, we've got ReadyShare storage which I used in the past. Very, very nice stuff here. Uh, we have advanced settings and then finally a uh, Plex Media Server. Never set this thing up before, but uh, I think I'm gonna probably uh, begin experimenting with Plex and uh, you know stream some movies or whatever or some videos uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens with Plex uh, I never used it before but I'll try to uh, probably you know experiment with it see what happens but uh, apart from that guys that's pretty much it for the OS uh, before we end the video once again I'm gonna run a quick little speed test on my phone here and see if there's been any difference at all in terms of Wi-Fi Wi-Fi oh my god Wi-Fi performance Right, I've hit go. We're pretty much in the exact same location. We are on the five gigahertz band. We've got 10 millisecond ping now. Wow, one millisecond less. And uh, yeah, as kind of expected, I guess, the speed's pretty much the exact same. 74.2 download. And then our upload, I think, is limited by a little bit. 
mainly because of our security system uploading things, but we got 18.6 uh, on the upload. Pretty nice, that's pretty much what I expected, I suppose. Uh, very cool stuff, rate ISP, five stars. It's the best I can get in my area. If I could get faster internet, let's say one gig up, one gig down, like I wish I could get better internet here, but at the moment, this is the best I can get. I cannot get any better internet in this location in the UK, I can't do it. Uh, so that's the best we have, uh, 75 down, 19 up roughly. But when I go ahead and move out, finally, I think this year I'm moving out for sure. Like, okay, 100% I'm moving out this year. Uh, I think towards the end of the year or mid-year, somewhere along there, I'm going to be moving out. And then hopefully I can get myself better internet than, you know, like 75 down and like 18 up. Uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be awesome, getting faster internet. But to be honest, I'm very, very happy with the internet speeds here. Uh, I wish the upload speed was better though, as uploading like 5 gigabyte files to YouTube does take an hour sometimes, uh, you know, depending on like, you know, the length of the video, of course, and the actual file size. But uh, some uploads do take an hour, and uh, I wish that could be lowered a little bit. That would be really cool. So, ideally, I just want more upload speed. The, the download speed, 80 megabit up, is pretty nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But apart from that, everyone, thank you all so much for watching my unboxing and first look of the Netgear Nighthawk XR700 gaming browser here. Full review coming soon, just like I did for the previous browser here. Now, what exactly I'm gonna do with this guy, the XR500? I might use it as like an access point or like a, a like a Wi-Fi extender, but I'll see if I can get that set up in a few days maybe, uh, see if we can use that router as like a Wi-Fi range extender. That'll be pretty funny, I guess. But uh, if I end up doing it, I'll make a video about it and stuff. But apart from that, everyone, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Goodbye.